Hello, everyone. We are back again with another episode of our weekly podcast. We are the Football Tailgaters, and we go over hot topics in the NFL. As always, we have here our Jets fan, Yams, our unbiased NFL fan, Andy, and myself, Aaron, a Cowboys fan. For our topics for today, we got some talks about Jonathan Taylor. Some news broke out with him, and then also a little bit of a Jets talk, and we got some Cowboy talk, too, obviously. And some rumors about Stefan Diggs. And we'll have some fantasy talk at the end. So stick around for that. Let's start with Jonathan Taylor. So he finally got approved for a trade. Uh, this has been kind of a rumor for a while. But now, so he he was talking, I guess, w- was it uh, Jim say right? There's a whole deal that he wasn't getting his bag. So he wants out. And that's what he's, he was doing. So now he gets permission to seek a trade. Jonathan Taylor, how much do you think he is worth? And what team should trade for him? Well, the Panthers received a second, third, and a fourth pick for 2023 and a fifth round selection in 2024 for Christian McCaffrey. So I figured it's similar to that kind of package because Jonathan Taylor is a dynamic player. He's 24 years old. He's nowhere near the 28-year-old frame where NFLs don't like. And I want to say the Dolphins because they were the other team in the discussion with Dalvin Cook when the Jets got Dalvin Cook. So they they want a running back. So I don't know. I'm leaning towards the Dolphins. For me, it would be the Buffalo Bills. They've been working so hard to find a running back and trying to, and they trade for all these other running backs, trying to find a good value. But if that's not working for you, just get Taylor, and that way you're you're all set in the running back game. So with the Buffalo Bills, I think it would be a a great match. Now I do uh, see here that there's some rumors that there are some teams willing to give a first round package from. So if that's the what the market is saying, then that's perfectly fine. Who those first rounders or who those teams would be willing to give those first rounders is, I think, something that I really want to know. But for a team that I think is willing to really trade for him, I think Miami is a good one as well. And my backup would be the Bills. But what are they willing to give up? Now, there you have to keep an eye on what he had to be. He was dealing with in his injuries with, I think it was a high ankle sprain, if I'm not wrong, in December. And he had to get surgery for that. It was like a cleanup surgery or whatever. So you have to keep a, uh, an eye on his like re-injuries and stuff like that, uh, especially with his ankle. I know he's been injured uh, multiple times throughout his like NFL career. I don't know how many times. I know it's a few times, at least like three. Keep an eye on that. He is 24, so we have to see if he can stay healthy. He is still very young, so this is his opportunity right now would be considered his peak, right? There's been this large talk about how... These running backs expire at 28 years old, right? So he's got, according to that speculation, you know, that that idea, which sometimes, you know, eh, maybe most of the time seems to seem true. He's got four years left. So I think it's good enough to risk it all for, I think, a first rounder. Uh, how high now? I would say probably mid-late first round he's worth. I don't think he's worth the early first round for sure. We We know that that's a risk. Well, don't you think the Buffalo Bills would be a great spot for him? They are trying to win the Super Bowl, and they're almost like right there to get there. I mean, they go to the AFC mm-hmm. conference, but they just are missing that one like single piece. Yeah, it's a risk. He can be like Johnson, the running back from the Cardinals that had like one, maybe two years that are were like spectacular, and then he just suddenly just had a downhill. And maybe last year was just the like a little peek of what that's going to be because he struggled all last year yes the offense was horrible yes the quarterback was in the good the offensive line was trash but it is a risk but i think that's a risk i'm willing to take with that first round pick yeah but are they willing to do it is the question and i guess this is like for a later topic but we do have someone on that team that may seem disgruntled or is disgruntled right with stefan diggs and they're they're kind of, and you got the whole pressure on Josh Allen too on if he can be the franchise QB to lead him to a Super Bowl and not struggle because we we've seen those struggles in the playoffs and yes it seems like the coaching staff doesn't really put him in the right position all the time but sometimes you know great QBs they can adapt to these things maybe so maybe not we don't know what we see with Josh Allen with that yet but he's got his time still but I think for the Bills as a whole like making that super bowl push i think it's it's right now and it's very interesting because you got that tight division there with the jets making a similar push of like 
all in and they got to do it in a short amount of time. And maybe the same thing for Dolphins, right? There's like that whole talk with uh, Tua, right? And his injuries. And I saw him struggle a little bit in the preseason too right now with this last game that he played. I I don't know if you can fully put uh, that risk yet for the Dolphins going in on Jonathan Taylor. So maybe, I I don't know, maybe I will come around the, the Bills pick here because thinking about it more, I think it's riskier for the Dolphins to give up that uh that first round pick. Especially if you're Jonathan mean, Taylor. Yeah, you might need a quarterback maybe. Cause you, yeah, exactly. And I think for that reason, the Bills is smarter for them to give up the first round because you got a franchise QB. You know, it sucks because now Anthony Richardson was added. Now they don't have that dynamic or short shortly we'll find out that they don't have that dynamic duel together. Uh, the Colts owner, Jim Erzay, I don't know if you guys heard heard about this, but he was planning to spend $20 million to help a whale move out of um, across the ocean or across something. Yeah, I think yeah. that whale passed away. And that whale passed away today. Yeah. But he wasn't Oof. willing to spend the money on <laughs> Jonathan Taylor. Well, it's, it's not that simple, though. I, I, I've read that, and it's... I it's mean, not, that's out of his own pocket. It's not like, <laughs> oh, it's going to hurt his, uh, Jim Irsay's pocket. No, it's all about the salary cap, and that's the most important thing. You, you, you have to work at a he cap. doesn't have the salary cap? He does. Maybe he doesn't, based on the amount that the, that the agent wants to pay the Taylor. It, that's a really dumb argument to do it's not a it's not about his pockets about the business wise of how to manage that salary cap the colts have no, the cap it, space but anyways even though they have cap space but you do you want to spend so much money on a running back that might give you like two years maybe of like dynamic gameplay and then you're strapped just like the cowboys it, were for like four years. years you have four years. we don't he's know not, that he's, and he's... no running backs are always a question mark I understand in the running backs, they're trying to get the, all the money that they can, which is perfectly fine. The new team that's going to trade for him is probably going to want a deal because he's, he's in his last year of his contract. So it's probably going to be a trade for a first round pick plus a new deal for Jonathan Taylor. So that new team is probably going to take the risk on him. Yeah. And I think that it takes a, a, a GM or an owner that really knows how to go about this. And it seems like Jim Mersey doesn't want to risk it. This is not easy at all, uh, how to get this contract going. And you want to figure it out. Okay, there's this talk about how the running backs don't last that long. Okay, well, how can you give them at least a similar amount of money in that short amount of time span, right? Because I, I think for Jonathan Taylor, he's seeking also that I think it's I don't know if there is like it came out or whatever, but I'm assuming he's he's asking for four years, right? Because that's pretty much the standard. Either that or three. You know, players might get a little bit like innovative with their contracts now. Uh, supposedly, yeah. there are some players out there that are trying to get those three. I mean, I know if the usually we used for softers from for many years of those five year contracts, and now we're seeing little by little some players getting four year contracts. I, I that's also something to keep an eye on. I think. Mm-hmm. Let's move on with the Jets guys now. Uh, this last game we saw Zach Wilson pull a running back style spin move for that big gain that he was going for against the Buccaneers. That was pretty cool to see. That was a pretty good highlight. But there was some trouble with the O-line here. Are the Jets in trouble with their shaky O-line? Yes, but I think they will make it work. Um, I think it's time to stop playing games with Makai Beckton because he played well in the Tampa Bay game. He has done everything that the organization has asked him to do. He's lost weight. And I know he was playing through injuries last year. But they should just name him left tackle as he was intended for and drafted for and move Dwayne Brown to right. But yes, they are going to be a little bit of a learning curve. And I think they played well last year. It wasn't the best, but they will be, they will be okay. I don't think they're going to be okay. Why not? Well, they have some issues at the, uh, at the offensive line that they can't fix. Even at oh. the, if, you're, if you're watching the hard knocks, even Robert Salah, the head coach, just... Put it out there for America to see that their biggest trouble right now is the offensive line. He called them out because he said that even if you have a Hall of Fame quarterback, big time superstars are wide receivers paying them $10 million. It's not going to work unless you're the heart of the team, of which is the offensive line, doesn't like show up. And that's the situation that's going on. We have Mekhi Becton, which supposed to be, was supposed to be the star of the offensive line. He's been injured mostly all of his, like, since his starting his career. What is it in his third year or fourth? Fourth. The fourth year. 
And in the Hall of Fame game, he pulled himself out and saying, like, you know what? This turf is not good enough for me, for this, for my type of skill or play. Himself. Well, I, no, football players play. And he actually, I'm seeing their death chart right now, and he's actually behind Billy Turner, the uh, left tackle, Billy Turner. You have Lakin Tomlinson. You have Connor McGovern, which is a good center. Then you have Elijah Vera Tucker, which I think it might be the best offensive lineman. Then you have a right tackle, Max Mitchell. Dwayne Brown, that you just said, he's injured. So I don't know when he's going to be coming back. He's already back. off. He's, I mean, according to See, ESPN, he's still know, out. You don't even know which, what's the only line that he was yelling at that day. Dwayne Brown wasn't playing, and he's one of the he's best. He's yelling at the players that are playing right now. We don't know if, like, whoever, he has to yell at all of their offensive linemen, even the backups, because they have to show up, whoever's playing, whoever gets injured and has to move up in the depth chart, they have to be ready for to protect Aaron Rodgers, or else you're going to put your offense in a really, cor- in a big corner there, that they have to literally figure out how to run the ball, like, very smartly, or throw the ball really quickly, and you don't want to be that type of offense. It's, I think it's definitely a concern in my opinion, um, because especially under center, you got a quarterback that is aging, right? And is on the older side of what you would say of someone who can with last. I mean, Aaron Rodgers does have a pretty good, I think, reputation of not exactly being an Iron Man, but like he's got an injured, obviously. But I don't think he can sit behind this old line and survive for these 17 games. It's going to be tough. And then it's coming around the corner. We got the season coming in soon. They got to figure it out. And it's, I think it's, okay, first of all, it establishes the game. I think the O-line obviously establishes the game, right? You, you got you to gotta figure out. And you can see, you can see the frustrations in Hard Knocks with um, uh, Salah, right? He was absolutely just so mad at, at the O-line with the, with the troubles in, um, in the, against the Panthers in, in practice. So they got to figure this out. Uh, I don't know. I can't go into exact details on how, I think, but I know it's trouble. That's all I know. <laughs> They'll be fine. Unfortunately. They have Dwayne Brown. And it's Brown. the weakest spot. No, they have Dwayne Brown. He wasn't in there. We have Lakin Tomlinson. He's he's in there. We have Gunner McGun- Connor McGun- McGun- McGovern. McGovern. M- McGovern. Yeah. yeah. He's he's decent. Um, Elijah Vera Tucker. He's one of the best. Mm-hmm. And you have Mekhi Beckham, who's been playing well in practice and in the games. It'll be fine. Okay. That's why... Robert Salah. Joe just... Joe Douglas has rebuilt this O line, but that's the reason but why you, you got to take into just, account yeah. that these guys are gonna get uh, hopefully not injured, right? But the the injuries happen whether it's a slight ankle tweak or like you know uh, a whole messed up ankle or something. You know, you gotta be prepared for that. So if one man falls down, is that like a domino effect here that's gonna happen, right? Yeah. I mean, it could be, I, I, you know, they start in just the, the first few games that they start in the season. They start with the Buffalo Bills. They have a good defense. Then after that, they have the Cowboys. They also have a good defensive line. Then you have the Patriots with Bill Belichick's smart defense. Then you have the Chiefs and then the Broncos, which I think they're going to be OK with Sean Payton figuring it out there. So you have big time tests at the beginning of the season. And if you don't have your offensive line ready to go, you're going to have some troubles and some losses there. So you really have to figure that offensive line. Maybe even think about putting new packages in there, putting some tight end protection in there. You're going to have to figure that out because if it's not working out, then you're going to have a hard time during the season. There's a, is it, have you heard about any trade rumors about uh, David Bakatari? Yeah. I thought they, is were, that I how, thought they were fake, aren't they? Those, those were fake? Mm, I thought so. I don't know. I haven't heard, I haven't read anything else. <laughs> it seems pretty new. As I'm like looking into it right now. I mean, if it's true, but then it looks dude, like they're working. I mean, mm, if, if if it comes out that they're looking f- for an O line to grab from whether it's a trade, or they just, you know? or, or maybe he just wants another best friend on the team. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he wants someone reliable. I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I mean, Tom Brady did the same thing with the Buccaneers. They were out there trying to like recruit players, and I believe one offensive line he did recruit i believe the buccaneers had some issues in the o-line and then even though they did win the super bowl they figure it out throughout the year and maybe like you're saying the jets will figure it out but right now since we're getting pretty close to the 
beginning of the season, it might be shaky at first. All I know is that they need to fix it. And, you know, there's still time, right? But we were talking about this not that long ago, like a couple of seconds ago, about the start of the season, these games that they're going to have to go through. You got you got the, the Bills defense, right? You got the Cowboys defense, too. And who was the third one? And week two, it was like week two? Yeah, right? you have the Patriots at week three. Patriots. Uh, who's uh, Judon? I would probably say is like their biggest threat, obviously. After that, I mean, I don't think it'll be like insanely tough on them. But I don't know. I you got the the Cowboys and, and Bills in three weeks in that three week timeline. It's it's gonna be tough. It's it's a great test. I think it's a great test. And what we see from there is gonna be a result of what's gonna happen further down the season. The only good thing for them for the Jets is that they're gonna be playing at home in mostly all those games except for the Cowboys one. So they're gonna be at home against the Bills. They're gonna be at home against the Patriots, and they're gonna be at home against the Chiefs. They need to have some chemistry with that O line. They need to have that communication on point, right? Because I think that's pretty essential to the O line too. Hey, for fantasy owners, yeah, if it chemistry. doesn't work out for the offensive line, look out for those running backs because they're going to be handing those balls out to the running backs constantly, or the or or pitching it to them. They're going to try to. They're going to feed those running backs constantly, constantly, constantly. Let's move on to the Cowboys now with more evidence, more video of Dak Prescott throwing some very questionable throws, right? Uh, interceptions, I should say. So there's more there's more worry about Dak and his interceptions right after leading the interceptions, the league in interceptions, right? We got the whole thing going on. So Dak Prescott keeps throwing those interceptions and the spotlight's on them. Is this concerning? It's just training camp and it's kind of hard to count stats when there's no talk tackling involved. I wouldn't be too concerned for it now with the stats, but I am con- concerned is if Dak doesn't play at least one preseason game. Or a quarter, or you know. You know, for me, it's not concerning. If the Cowboys are a spotlight team, they always the media talks about them. I'll say this: Fox FS1 are talking about them even more than usual, and talking and criticizing the Cowboys more than they usually do. And the reason, in my opinion, is and I can be completely wrong here, is that they don't own the Cowboys games throughout the whole year. Now they're on a auction, the, the games that they're going to appear on CBS or they're going to appear on Fox. They're not all the national uh, conference uh, teams are going to be in Fox all the time. So you're trying to get those ratings up to talk about the Cowboys and just trying to build up some, some media talk of all these haters that hate on the Cowboys to just watch them. And that's what's going on. You see that more hate from Fox and not from like ESPN and other networks. So that's just my thoughts. It's it's just practice. That's their time to try new things. Um, uh, he uh, supposedly Dak Prescott has a little bit more control of the of the game plays. Even though McCarthy's going to be uh, calling him, the only thing that does worry me is that McCarthy doesn't want to play Dak Prescott throughout the whole preseason. That does worry me. What's going on there? There's a little bit of mismanagement mismanagement from McCarthy, I would say, but just a little, not too much to worry about. Yeah, that is concerning, right, with that last point that you made. But aside from that, I think this is fine. I We may see a different Dak Prescott. Who knows? He's going into, what is it now already, his like seventh season, sixth season? Man, I've like lost count, but he's he's in it. He's going into and his seventh season. He, yeah, he's had his ups and downs, and with this last season, it was it was pretty concerning what we saw with the interceptions. He did miss some games, right? Which is even a bigger question mark because it's like how how do you miss games and still lead the league in interceptions? <laughs> so now that we got a new image here of right, Kellen Moore is gone. And you, like you said, it seems like Dak might have more control in the reins of the offense, even though Mike McCarthy is still leading with the offense. It's it's something to not really be concerned about and, and just wait and see. Now, I want him to play this last preseason game to shake the rust off more, right? Because you're going into the first game of the season. You got to be ready. Yeah. And even even in the first game of the season, there's still some rust to shake off. but. It doesn't matter. Like these are preseason games. He needs I to think play. the O line is fine. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he's gonna like pull a. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't think he's gonna pull a Zach Wilson here. Right. He's not gonna be stupid. I think he's a smart guy. He's not gonna get himself Run injured or anything. It, it's fine. One for thirty five yards. Yeah. He can. He can pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay. You got me there. <laughs> yeah. 
he needs to play at least three, four series. Just to like you're saying, he needs to play. You can't just go into the first Sunday oh, yeah. night and uh, and play against the Giants and just just play his first game. No, that's that shouldn't be. Even Aaron Rodgers is going to be playing in his last game. Uh, Tom Brady, he played in preseason games. Dak Prescott is not elite. He needs to play. Now, I do say, I do think that... Does he want to play? Because Aaron Rodgers is is the one saying he wants to play. I think he does. He's always very competitive. Yeah, I wouldn't see why not. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this guy, the way he talks, like, at least in, during, like, the training camp and stuff like that? Like, that guy's energetic. The guy's, he's a leader. He, he's great. He's competitive. When it comes to that. But his whole personality, yeah. I do think that Dak Prescott needs to play very well this season, or there's going to be a bunch of question marks through the media, through fans, through everybody oh, yeah. saying, you know what, it's time for the Dallas Cowboys to move on because his qu- contract is coming up again, and he's probably going to want to get paid a big time salary. I know it's really hard to replace Dak, but if he doesn't play well, then you gotta you gotta really think about his future. Oh yeah. For sure, one thousand percent. Now, I don't think this is gonna be such a like a, a a hurtful loss. Like we can't let this guy go, like at all costs. It's it is hard to replace him. I completely agree with you. But I would be if I had someone like a Joe Burrow on my team, that would hurt a lot more to lose than someone like Dak Prescott. And that's no shade to Dak Prescott, because I I don't think it's been fair completely to what he's been through as of recent times. Um, that could be argued. But that's just how I see it. And yeah, it's, it's fair to bring up those question marks with Prescott. And I think he, he should be pressured on this. And will he take a big bag for his next contract? I don't I, think I he think, should. I don't think he should. He might. He shouldn't, yeah. Did he but play like- he also he seems like the type of person to... Take a big bag this time? Yeah. No, he shouldn't. Yeah. He should play for the team. I think and- he's the type of player to not take yeah. the big bag, though. Pretty- I think he's totally possible at- Taking a pay cut. I don't know, man. Money talks. <laughs> Did he play I, last year's? It's not out of the question at all. Huh? What's that? your question? Wait, what? Did he play at all last year? No. No. Last year in preseason? Yeah. Any games? Oh, last yeah, year? Yeah, he did. He did? Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. He did. Are you yeah. sure? Yes, it's very common for him to play. This is something season. new. This is why it's a like a bigger question mark because he's like, he's not playing at all. What? You're seeing like these other teams starting their quarterbacks already and like. As long as Dak doesn't, yeah. As long as Dak doesn't go into a lower level of sure? quarterback play, yes, I'm pretty sure. If, <laughs> if Dak Prescott doesn't play a lower level of how he usually plays, it's perfectly fine to stick with him because uh, you know what you're going to get from him. He's not an amazing elite quarterback, but at least you can try to figure out a game plan with yeah. him in there. But if he does start to play horrible and turns the ball over a lot. Then yeah, of course you're gonna have to think about moving on because look at how many teams go from first round uh, quarterback to first round quarterback and they still struggle. You have right now the Panthers. Uh, I mean, we've been seeing uh, Young struggle and with the Panthers in the preseason games. We don't know how that's gonna correlate throughout the season. We have C.J. Stroud, another quarterback, has been struggling as well. Uh, two years ago, when the uh, Tra- Lance, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, Trevor Lawrence were uh, drafted, the only one that seems like capable right now was Trevor Lawrence, and the other ones like don't. So it's not that easy to just like find a quarterback, but mm-hmm. it, you just have to really, really plan it out either. Because if your team is ready, go get yourself. Try to trade for a veteran. Yeah. And or because it's going to take a while for a rookie to get into that system, even though Dak Prescott did a very good job of when he was a rookie. But I'm just saying it's really risky in the NFL. You know what would help him out if this rumor is true? Stefan Diggs. Mm. There's a rumor that <laughs> Stefan Diggs wants to be traded. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I don't know if you want more details on that, Andy, to expand upon it. But I heard it from like Stephen A on first take. And he's, he said he's got his sources. That Stefan Diggs wants out. Yeah, there's another source, and this is Twitter, right? With verified NFL notifications, whoever follows them, they do give out some some rumors that sometimes turn out to be true. But according to to this account, uh, wide receiver Stefan Diggs and his agent Adisa Bakari have proposed to GM Brandon Bean a list of three teams he would like to play for in 2023, meaning that he's pushing it pushing the buffalo bills to trade him planting the seed yeah planting the seed and and well we're getting really close to the beginning of the season so the three teams that he asked for is either the dallas cowboys 
the Chicago Bears and the 49ers. So there you go. Dallas Cowboys, 49ers. What was the third one? The Bears, the Chicago okay. Bears. I think out of those three teams, my personal opinion, he would fit best with the Cowboys because I think there's just too much with the 49ers. I think that's more of a ring chasing move. But if he wants his best fit, it's definitely with the Cowboys. And I don't think he wants to go to a team worse than the Bills, personally. But I, I don't know. I don't know why why the Bears were on there. I have no clue. Maybe maybe you see something special with Justin Fields. I don't know. He may. I mean, I don't know if this rumor is true. Stephen A. Smith has his sources. But Stefan Diggs is just a guy that will never be satisfied. He pulled the same stunt of the Vikings. And now he's we're seeing it again with the Bills, if it's true. I believe that maybe he feels, and I I could agree with him, is the window for the opportunity for the Bills to go to the Super Bowl is no longer there. It's gone. Speaking like a true Jets fan. (laughs) I don't know. uh, For the 49ers. No, it's true. I'm not trying to be like unbiased, but anyway. It's a little biased. That's how it sounds like. No, (laughs) no. Well, if from those three teams, I mean, the Bears, it's a big question mark. Yeah, they do have Justin Fields, which he lit it up the league in December. Who knows if that can be carried over? They do have a, it seems like a pretty good running game. It seems like they're going up, but we don't know if they can get all, all the way to the Super Bowl. So that's a question mark for me. The 49ers, you have Purdy. We don't know if, if his success that he had last season can go over to the next se- to this next season. Now, these players that they had with Garoppolo, like Debo Samuel, like his numbers went down. Uh, Randy Nayuk, his numbers went down when they traded for Christian McCaffrey. So for him to be a huge impact, it's a big question mark as well. For the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, Aaron makes a good point there. If you put him, uh, if if you put Stefan Diggs there with the Cowboys, that gives Dak Prescott another weapon. He's not an elite quarterback, so if you give him more help, then that will actually help there. Uh, if you put C.D. Lamb in the slot, he played that in college. You have Brand uh, Cooks in one side of the field, and you have Stefan Diggs on the other side of the field. And it seems like a lot of, uh, not to me, right? I don't think the Cowboys are going to go to the Super Bowl, but there is a lot of people that do think the Cowboys are good enough to go to the Super Bowl. So that's a team I would choose. So before I move on to the last topic of this episode, I do want to say it's pretty fair to say that August 21st, so that's Monday, Stefan Diggs did tweet a reinforcement of his, I guess, you know, his love for uh, the Bills, that he's rocking with them through and through. So he's do stuck. with that information what you will. <laughs> Stuck. He want to have that. Maybe it's a cry for help. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> well, another point to make is for the Dallas Cowboys, his brother still also plays there, Trayvon Diggs. So that's another thing, a reason why he can go to the oh, Cowboys. Yeah. I like that. Anything that helps him, you know, motivate him to get out of there and, and go with the Cowboys. But anyways. Honestly, a, a, a simple conversation of with with uh, GM uh, Josh Allen and himself like Stefan Diggs they can really easily squash this to make him feel better or whatever and and everything will be good mm-hmm. no big deal yeah yep let's go on and talk about our top 5 fantasy football busts yeah the fantasy football not a lot of people have already made their drafts these are for the people that Uh-oh. just just be careful when you're drafting uh <laughs> For me, I would still wait to draft the team after this weekend, the final preseason game, just in case there's any trades. Uh, We're seeing that with Jonathan Taylor, maybe Stefan Diggs, maybe some injuries. So these are just so for you prepared yourself. So here's my top five fantasy football busts for next season. The first one I have is J.K. Dobbins, the running back for the Baltimore Ravens. Every year they put J.K. Dobbins as a top running back. This year he has declined because people have been scared of drafting him as high as they were the years prior because his injuries that team is stacked with running backs it's going to be a running up running back committee so just draft jk dobbins towards the end deandre hopkins is my second one deandre hopkins there's a reason why a lot of teams didn't go and snatch him when when the cardinals were offering him to trade him and it took a long time but tennessee times is his new home we don't know how much Tannehill can can produce right at his age right now. They've been struggling. It's a good coach, a great coach with Mike Ravel, but I don't know if he can produce how he used to produce with them. Uh, we don't even know. Uh, Will Levis, their, their rookie quarterback, he's been struggling very much in the preseason games. And then Malik Willis, he's also not the top-tier quarterback. The third player that I have is DeAndre Swift. He was an, uh, 
player taken in the top 10 of a lot of fantasy leagues last year. This year, he's been going downhill. He's going to a team with another running back committee. They have Goddard, they have Boston Scott, and it seems like there's rumors that they also want Jonathan Taylor. So do that with you wish. It's not, it's not like he's going to be a big-time uh, workhorse with the Philadelphia Eagles. My fourth one is Odell Beckham. He's been injured for the last few years, and he hasn't produced how he usually produced in back then in his, in his earlier career with the Giants. When he can give you a, a few games and giving you great catches, but then he comes down an injury. So if you draft him pretty high, you're actually wasting a pick there. So wait on him or maybe pick him up in waivers if he's available. And my last pick is Kenneth Walker, the running back for the Seattle Seahawks. Wow. The Seattle Seahawks actually took a running back uh, for uh, in this last and uh, this NFL list, this last NFL sure. draft. Yeah. And it seems like that running back is actually doing a lot better than him. And he's been actually, uh, Kenneth Walker has been having some injuries as well. So I would just be very careful with Kenneth Walker. He's been taking off a little too high. So I would just stay away from him. I would add on with the Hopkins one, uh, maybe injuries to keep an eye on. Because yeah. he, he's 31 and he was dealing with some on and off stuff, stuff on uh, a 2021 and then 2022, I think he just had uh, uh, something on his knee, maybe. Yeah, that's what it was. It was the last two games. Anyways. He can be a good red yeah. zone target, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I just wouldn't draft him too high. Maybe wait after why, why six De- or seven. Why is DeAndre Hopkins a, a bust on your list? Because he's been injured for some, for for, uh, for the last season. Mm-hmm. And he he's not producing as much as he used to early on. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason why you just have to. I mean, and just look at Brian the, Tannehill. <laughs> yeah, l- yeah. Look at his co- quarterbacks. We don't know if they're going to be able to pro- provide, like, do those throws like he needs to to catch in the red zone. I agree with De- DeAndre Swift. He's no good. Um, although Beckham, I noticed that all, all of your lists pretty much just injury prone people. Yeah, and they get drafted high. Well, also Kenneth Walker's another one. What about one. you know Travis Etienne, Calvin Ridley? Those are like. I wouldn't stay away from them. Those are like a try. It's 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 more like and I don't sleepers. think they're drafted too high. I don't think they're drafted too high. You could say maybe someone like George Kittle. Tra- Travis pretty... Etienne is getting drafted pretty high, isn't he? No, not really. No, he's I not like, he's like a, a third running back. He's like a late second or something like that, or like early third. No, no, Etienne is more like a fourth. I'm surprised Breeze Hall didn't make your list too. Well, because they got Cooks. So I mean, if you're drafting Breeze Hall early, I mean, then you have some other issues. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Okay, <laughs> okay, all right. Um, why not, why not uh, George Kittle? George Kittle is a good one, but he did produce a little bit with uh, with Purdy, so he can still produce some high end numbers there. Uh, mm. So I, that's why you I don't, put him on my list. Would you take him over Travis Kelsey or Kelsey? No. Yeah. No. What are you talking about? I don't George know. Kittle? Like they were. Yeah. No. no nobody ever. Travis Kelsey's going like number one. He's he's uh, Travis Kelsey's like a, an elite wide receiver. Yeah. That's how people are are listing him. He's the only one in his class that is just like elite. Everybody else would be a second, which would be well, Kittle, Andrews. That's it. And that those would... are the top three. That those, I'm just saying, those are the top three. Now, are you drafting? Are you drafting Kelsey first round? Most most. I'm not saying where first round. I'm just saying yeah. first round in general. Yeah, of yeah. course. I don't. I don't know. Well, it depends on what position I am, and it's some people would. Yeah, yes. I'm just saying. Yeah, some people yeah. would, and I wouldn't blame you if you would. But I'm just saying personally, it really depends on the position I'm drafting. Interesting. I, I thought you guys were going to be like disagreeing with me with Kenneth Walker. No, 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 really, because they just they did draft a running back. Yeah, Zach Charbonnet mm-hmm. from UCLA, and it seems like Char- Charbonnet. Yeah, he's not going to be the starter. Zach Charbonnet, so it's still going to be Kenneth Walker, but we don't know for how long. He, he might eat up the, the carries. And he was just drafted. Yeah. That's the most surprising part. Kenneth Walker was just yeah. drafted last year. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting stuff going on in Seattle. I think keeping an eye on DK Metcalf, too, is not that crazy on um, maybe being risky or not. Well, the, I don't we know don't what, know if yeah, Geno Smith it, can, yeah, can continue that production. And then behind Geno Smith, they have Drew Locke. So yeah, it's like it's a question mark. So just DK Metcalf and Lockett, these are players that I would maybe just get. I mean, of course, like close to bench DK Metcalf. It's like more of a starter, and the rest that would be more of a bench for the Seattle Seahawks. Yep. Uh, I, for the, I I mean I pretty much agree with that. Everything on the list. So 
That's all I got for that. Yeah, well, good luck, everybody, with their fantasy. <laughs> all right, yeah. So thank you the, uh, to everyone who made it to the very end. Thank you guys for listening. We'd love to see you guys giving your opinions on our social media, football underscore tailgaters on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you guys again for listening, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.